Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. Let me go ahead and uh, I see that one of my software pieces is not working. So give me one second and we'll get rolling. All right. Um, good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday, wherever you are in the world. Uh, so I sent out the PDF to my email list, and uh, we put this blues alternate baseline course, which is a 3.0 course, and we're going to go through exercise one today. And what I want to, want to talk about is how to practice these things. How do you lock up the left hand and the right hand together? And I think it's really important to um, to learn how to practice this stuff. Like, how do we? It can it can fe feel overwhelming at times to try to think. Well, how do I lo lock the right hand and the left hand together? Sometimes it feels uh, kind of odd. You get used to this kind of bass line, let's say, and then you have to learn a new bass line, and then your hands don't really lock up. But I want to show you uh, some ways that you can definitely learn how to do this. And we're going to start by talking about even blues alternate bass lines. So I had this idea of coming out with a course that uh, takes one example and we actually learn how to play this, which I call my most popular uh, lick at iMusic Academy because it was the first one in the video that's about to be at a million views. And uh, it just starts off and I didn't say anything. I said, all right, let's get this guy going right here. And it's just a C chord to the F chord and into a C7 uh, without the, the third note. So you get used to this pattern right here and it almost becomes automatic. You learn how to play this and you're building up your finger memory. Muscle memory is really important. And then we put that with an eighth note bass line. One and two and three and four and one. And, and even as we learn, as, as that was my first example, and I show you guys how to lock up the hands, there are a couple ways that we can make it to where we can build up muscle memory and learn how to lock it up. So let's go ahead and let me talk to tell you how I like to teach this. I talk about left hand only is really important. And I'm right now, I'm not using the, the, the bass pattern we're going to use. I'm going to use right now, just talk about the eighth note pattern that is on my most popular video, right? And so you first play that by knowing your scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and knowing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you take your, your pinky and you put your index finger on the root and the fifth note of the C scale, right? So it's the fingering is five, two to five, one. But to play it in eighth notes at first, one and two and three and four, and with that kind of one and then two and then three and then four and with that kind of triplet swing feel it can be difficult at times when you're trying to lock it up with this so what i like to encourage people to do is to play things straight you have the music uh, most of you have the music to this. It's a free PDF. Even on my most popular video, you just sign up for that. And uh, and it's really, it's for, totally free. And if you want that PDF and you don't have it, let me know in the chat and we'll we'll make sure you get you get that. But but what, what you do is actually practice it like this. One and two and three and four and one. So 
I learn where the beats actually line up, C and G, and I go, that's beat one, one and. So that C note is by itself, one and, and then notice when I go to the F and A, I'm at with C and A, one and, two and, three and, four. Now I'm gonna play this a little bit faster than I normally would. If I was really teaching this and spending a lot of time, I would even play it slower and I would really, really break it down. But I at least want to tell you the concept. If there's any bass line that you're wanting to learn, or any right hand idea. It's a great exercise to practice things hand separate. Same thing with the bass line, whether it's this bass line, whether it's this bass line, whether it's this bass line. You know, all these bass lines are in this, this blues alternate bass course, but um, the way we learn it is we learn how to do it hand separate. We're building up some muscle memory. And the same thing goes with this in the right hand. I mean, practicing this by itself, and if you have more experience, you learn how to play that in a different key. Well, how would I play this in D flat? Well, it's a trick. Uh, well, not a trick, but uh, there are only two fingerings you have to learn to play an, a lick like this in their right hand. It's either a slide key, you're sliding from the minor third to the major third, or you're hammering on from the minor third to the major third with fingers two and three, and you get up into the key a little bit, and now you're doing this. That's a, that's a hammer-on key, right? And then I'm going to go up to D. Well, that's also a hammer-on. I can't slide from the minor third to major third. So now I'm doing that. And then another slide key, because I can slide off to that. So by learning how to use the proper fingerings for certain licks and ideas and practicing hand separate will give, get you a lot of confidence. And so, um, so that's what I want you to do is slow things down and straighten them out. Um, practice hands separately. All right, now let's talk about this PDF right here. Uh, everybody has this if you're on my email list. I sent it this morning. And what I'll do, guys, is I'll do what I've been doing this week is anybody who's not on my email list or you're not a part of my membership group, I can just put a link up in the um, in the chat replay and or the description so where you can just download this PDF. But, but here's what I'm calling our 3.0 courses. We just released... Uh, a really cool bundle and as a gift I'm giving all these away this this whole course away but here's what I love about these 3.0 courses is that uh, now all of the courses at iMusic Academy have these table of contents and you just click on anything you want to see the music to so it's a clickable index and those of you who have been around iMusic Academy for a long time, you know that these are what I call game changers. We, we've, we've moved in the, to these, this world of learning a, uh, more and more about technology and how to make things easier. When I first started iMusic Academy, I had every video. It was, uh, the courses were great, I mean, good content as far as uh, I was concerned a lot of people like the courses, but they would have to scroll through and we would have to scroll through. All right, I'm going to go to the... Uh, 45 minutes into the course and work on this one example because they were all one long file and then we made them we said all right well let's let's chop them all up and we did that but then we started think, thinking well how can we make the pdfs even better and so that's what you have now all the courses have this now where you go and and uh, and you just click on what you want to work on and then watch this. This is what I love. I, if I want to go back to the index, I click the home button and it'll take me right back there. And if I want to watch the lesson to any example, I just click on it right there and it takes us there. Let me turn up the, see that? All right, guys, let's go ahead and work on baseline number eight. Yeah. And that works for all of these. So and then if you click the back button, it'll take you right there. And if you want to go to the index at any time. Oh, and this is an audio link to the whole playlist. So if you wanted to just spend, you know, an hour or 30 minutes going through every example, it'll take you right there. And of course, you have the full PDF. So I'm really excited about that. And I practice these things too, guys. Uh, so let's talk about example one. And uh, thank you guys to the people who have liked the video already please if you get a chance to say hello just uh, i know it's a weekend kind of a very relaxed stream but i just have been really encouraged with all the feedback and different people all around the world have been uh coming to iMusic academy and i really appreciate it all right a shout out to my membership group 
We have Dave. This is an unofficial membership group. These guys have been with me for a year and a half, and somebody signed up yesterday, uh, Charity. So thank you, Charity, for signing up. And uh, a quick a quick note is that uh, I've been working for over a year and a half of the idea of, of creating a membership to go along with all the courses at iMusic Academy. And I have had so much fun with these six people, and now uh, with Charity signing up, that makes seven, that I have not made it public that, hey, we are going live. We are going to go live April 1st. But what I decided to do is with the... Uh, the blues bundle that I just did with all the 3.0 courses, it's uh, five, it's four blues volumes. And, uh, and then the easy jazz course also is a 3.0 course now. And I said, I have two free gifts for anybody who gets the bundle. And the one gift is the blues, bu uh, this blues alternate bass course. You get that. And also you get access to my membership group until April 1st. So you can see if I'm the right person for you to join, uh, the music Academy. So, uh, we do four lives a week, a minimum of four lives a week. And uh, it's just been a really fun, encouraging group. So shout out to Dave P, Dave W, Claire, T-Man, Peter, Ian, and uh, Charity. Thank you guys so much. All right, let's dig in. So here we go. This PDF right here, we're doing alternate bass number one. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And Notice that I'm starting with the, what I call, it's a second line groove or I kind of like an island feels what I like to think of this, but uh, Claire is one of our uh, members at iMusic Academy and Claire has his own uh, tune. It's uh, Claire de Blues. <laughs> which we do, which everyone who's a member has their own uh, song that we've created. And uh, I love this feel, one and two and three and four and one and two. So the middle finger gets the and of two, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And, and this is something you're gonna want to practice hands separate. Now notice the first thing is that it fits right under the hand and the triad. It's five, three, one. It doesn't matter what key I'm in. It's going to be the exact same fingering, five, three, one. And if you have more experience, this, this stream is for beginners to intermediate players. But if you have more experience, try it in a different key. Now, as we, as we learn, well, how do I play things in different keys? There, there's a thing that we all have to learn. We all have to learn our major scales. If we learn our major scales and then in all keys, and then we want to transpose things, we can do it by knowing all these formulas. Like, how do I play this in the key of E flat? Well, I know my E flat major scale has three, fl three flats, uh, B flat, E flat, and A flat. And because I know this pattern, Oh, it's the triad, okay, and then it's the four chord, and then it's the, the um, one, five, and flat seven of E flat. And the same thing with the bass. Well, how do I know what the notes are in an E flat bass line, this triad? Because I know that there are three flats in the key of E flat. And we don't learn it all. Uh, none of us are going to learn it all in the same day. It's not like you're going to learn all your scales. But you start by first learning the scale of C. And you go, okay, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. You guys know that I like to say, not only do I want to know the notes going up the scale, but I think it's important to be able to say the notes going down. C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. And how do you learn that? Well, one way I like to learn it is you write them out, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and you read it going left to right, and then you practice going right to left and learning it backwards. But at the same time, you, uh, I like to put a comma as I write it out. C, D, E, F, that puts it in uh, groups of four. C, D, E, F, C, D, E, F, and I practice that over and over. And then I do it on the way back down. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, G, A, B, C. And then I put those together. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and, and make rhythms out of it. And then on the way back down, it's like this. C, B, A, G. C, B, A, G, C, B, A, G, and then I do F, E, D, C. And that's what I did on all my major scales. And that really helped me learn them. And so I don't even have to think about it. So if I'm either playing an idea or playing a scale, it's not, I not only know that I'm playing the major scale, but I know C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. 
So there are little things that we can do to really, really learn how to do all this stuff. And it's just taking one thing at a time. You learn the C major scale, and then you say, all right, what's the next major scale I need to, to learn? And you, you can start by going up five notes from your C, and then G is the one that has one sharp. Okay, and, and then we learn about the scale of G. So, you, so you're going between C and you're going between G, learning about G. So there, again, there are lots of different ways to build confidence in learning about different keys. So right now, as we do this, one and two and three and four and one and two and three, I'm building up confidence right here. So you do that four times and then guess what? It goes up to the four chord of the C blues, which is F. F, A, and C. Well, how do I know what those notes are going to be? I know the scale of F. The scale of F is F, G, A. It has one flat, B flat. And that's the F major scale. But the other thing I can look at, oh, it's a F note, and then you skip a, a white note, and then you're good there. So in a very simple three chord blues, you're going to have four chords. The C chord is one. That's the main chord. That's the home chord. And it's going to go up to the fourth note of the C scale. The fourth chord is F. The four chord is F. And then the five chord is G. So it's a one, four, five, a simple blues. Now, as you learn this example right here, again, you've practiced this. And maybe you've even learned it with the eighth note pattern. Even when we do this, and you go up to the four chord, you're on F, you've learned it. It's the same exact finger pattern on C, same exact finger pattern on F, and the same exact finger pattern on G. But now I'm going to do it with this new pattern right here. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So now I want to talk about how how do we straighten this out? Let me get let me just check the chat and see if anybody has said hello in the chat. All right, we have six likes. I'll take that. But if somebody wants to uh, be brave and and tell me good morning in the chat, that would be awesome. Uh, a quick side note, I've been doing a lot of streams this week and putting files in there for you guys to click on really quick download links, but I finally figured out how, why my uh, stream, my chat was not on the replays, so we've got that taken care of. It might be tomorrow before the chat will go uh, on the replay, but anyway, I figured out what the problem was there, so we're good there. All right, so as I'm learning, I have this example, right, and as I'm learning one and two and i have to figure out where my and of two locks up awesome very cool gus thank you so much for joining us on a saturday morning and hey vicky good to see you as well all right one and two and notice that my e locks up with my c one and two and three and four and then i'm on the g and the f and a together Notice that one and two and three and four and the other thing is is I'm actually practicing this. Oh, what's up, Dave? Good to see you, brother. Awesome, Dave. Always good to see you. Traveling around the world, playing golf, and occasionally dropping by. Dave is a member of our awesome team. Love my t my team members, my unofficial membership guys. All right, so here we go. One and two and three and four and one and... Remember how we talked about it at the beginning of this stream, to straighten things out. This is how you build confidence, and this is how you get this muscle memory built up. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... Now, if you have more experience, you'll speed it up a little bit. The other thing is, uh, this right here is a great work of the fingers, right? 
one and two. I'm working my thumb, I'm working my second and third finger, I'm working my two and four, and my three and five, all with one exercise. So if you had five minutes to practice in a day, you want to build some confidence. Another thing that I'm doing, you can probably hear, sometimes I'm not going all the way up. I'm not going one and two and three and sometimes I go. But I also want you guys to hear, as I play this, this is beat one, one and. So then the C note always gets the and. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So you're always going to rock back and forth. One and two and three. All right, so listen to this. So if I know where my middle finger on the and, which is, this is the important note we have to get. One and two and three and four and two and. This is the only one that's on the off beat. One and two and three and four. So when I put that together, one and two and, there it is, the and of two. One and two and three and four and one and two. Okay, now I'm going to show you a game-changing moment right here okay I'm gonna look at this PDF and I know Dave likes to play by ear a lot and sometimes I force him to to look at the PDFs uh, we're gonna start actually with my iMusic Academy family uh, some of you guys love to read music and some of you guys are working on it and I'm not just speaking about Dave I'm talking about uh, some people are really used to reading music and some people are more playing by ear and all of that's important but um, the PDFs, even if you don't read really well, can really help you because you can start to see the way things line up. And also it tells you what fingering that you can use. And you can always use different fingerings from what I suggest. But I, I do have a, a classical background as well as, you know, jazz and blues. And so I like, there are certain fingerings that uh, I like to use and recommend. But whatever works for your hand is the one that I want you to use. All right, but here's the game changer. So on this blues, you're going to play it four times. And then watch what happens. I switch to my middle finger on, I mean my thumb on F. So I didn't do this. Okay, I didn't play C at the end. I want you to see uh, this on the PDF. Let me make sure it's written that way. Yes. Yeah, so then you switch to your thumb on F. And the reason this is important, watch when I come back to C, I don't play that F again. I go down to whatever chord I'm going to. My thumb, watch this, thumb, Watch thumb and watch this again. All right, now this is such an important thing right here. One of the most important things I could tell you today is as you're transitioning to those next chords, use your thumb to go to that note. Watch this. Here's the fourth time. One and two and three and four and four and one and two and three and four back to C now I'm about to go to the five chord which is G and watch this and what this does is it's almost like having a pedal that connects things and I'm not using any pedal at all but the, this helps me connect my ideas listen I'll play this slowly I'll do it even slower. Now watch this. Does that make sense? If it does, put it in the chat. 
that's one of the things that really, uh, really was a game changer for me learning about is, you know, how do I connect? How do I make a smooth transition? And that was one of the things I just figured out, at least for me, is using my thumb as a way to kind of connect these ideas. And the same thing. So the lick that I just played is the the other lick, another lick that's in my most popular video at iMusic Academy. It's coming up on a million views. I don't know why I'm so excited about that getting to a million, but if you know about you know iMusic Academy where it started, uh, we've come a long way. But it is my worst quality video when it co comes to like production. It's dark and for some reason people have loved that video. Uh, I think partly because I just started right away teaching it. I just said, all right, let's get this guy going, whatever. And uh, it's been a really funny to go back and read the comments in that video. But we're at 986,000 views on that. And I want to do something really nice for the iMusic Academy YouTube community when that happens. And you guys are supposed to help me figure out what could we do to um, to celebrate going to a million on that video? I'm still waiting for people to say what we need to do. Quick water break. Uh, d is this making sense to everybody? And isn't it amazing that this this is just one lick? This is like the first lick that we came up with, you know, for iMusic Academy. I said, all right, let me show you three licks to be a pro in an hour or something like that. And this is one of them. But even this lick right here, I didn't even, I just played it. And sometimes I was going all the way up. Sometimes I was just going up a little bit. One and two and just the first two. And sometimes I did a mixture of both. Let's do that. All right, just a little fun fact. When I what I just did there, I was playing C, and then instead of going up to F, I just went to a C minor triad, C, E flat, and G. Well, why in the world did that even work? Because an F7 chord is one of the major scale of F, three, five, and flat seven. So I just hung out there, and that's a part of an F7 chord, and it actually makes it a one, three, five, flat seven, and nine. So I did like this. So uh, at the blues courses, the first three blues courses that we have, we do this. Uh, let me think of what the turnaround is. We go. Uh, what is the what is the turnaround? I can't remember what the turnaround is. There have been so many. Um.
know, I can't remember what we did. Anyway, the turnaround at iMusic Academy does this at the end. And all that is is C up to E, up to F, up to, up to F sharp, G. And I think we do this. I just can't remember which turnaround we use. So somebody check volume one and tell me. But the reason I show you this is because a turnaround is a set of chords or changes to help you get back to the top of the form. And so one way you can practice it is going to the C up to E, which is one up to three, four, and you're just walking it up. It's called chromatically, one note to the next. And then I did an octave, octave G here to get this back to the the top and it starts over but a fun way we've been doing a very simple way to get back to the top is you play the C's together and then you can go E, but e, e and B flat da, da, and then chromatically down so one note down at a, at a time and then listen to this chromatically up chromatically down and you end on G's together right Start it over. Now watch my thumb. Uh, any questions on any of that? Let me check my time here. I want to make sure. I think we're going to go today. We're going to go t until about 10.50. So I'm going to do another 20 minutes or so. This is uh, so much fun. And we've been having a lot of people, man, from all over the world, been emailing me and talking about a different iMusic Academy thing. So I'm very thankful for that. And I love helping you guys. All right, any questions on any of that? Oh, good. We got an unsubscribe there. I was waiting to see if any of my uh, members are, um, of course, Dave P., Vicky, good to see you guys, and Gus, thank you guys for being here. All right, any questions about what we just did? Let's talk about a couple of things that you can uh, put with that. What I love about these blues courses and even this first example from blues alternate bass number one is that you're, you're working on this one idea. Now, this course, some of you know this already, but blues alt one has this over every single bass line. So you learn this and then you're really focusing on the left hand. So some of the, let's just look at a few of the bass lines here. This will be fun to do. Uh, and I'll pick, uh, let's see. Let's see what example two is. Okay, two is this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. in the world are you going to lock that up? One, we're going to practice it uh, hand separate. You're going to le learn one and two and three and four. And notice that that and of two is just like we did in the first one. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. But the difference on this bass line is one and two and three and four and one and two and three. So another offbeat and four and Now, in order to play this, we have to figure out where do where do the beats line up. Let's go ahead and do that. Anybody like these bass lines? Make sure you like this video. Leave a comment if you get a chance. But tell me uh, which which bass line out of those two do you like better? Do you prefer this one with this lick? But 
But how do I lo lock that up? I'm going to do what we did, talked about at the very beginning of the video. I said you play it straight and you play it s slow. One and two and three and four and even slower. One and two and three and that's together. Two and three and four and so that's together. The great thing about it is when I go to F, it's the same exact pattern. Finger, uh, fingering is exactly the same. Isn't that cool the way that works? You learn these patterns, uh, and they work often in any key. Like this is the same fingering no matter what key you're in. Also, if I played a uh, C major scale fingering, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, that's the same fingering for C, for G, for D, for A, and for E. It's the same, it's the same fingering for that. So you learn one pattern, you can often use the same finger pattern for any key. And so let's keep working. Let's go through another. You guys want to do a couple more of these? All right, let's do this. Um, let's just go to the index again, and let's do, let's see, this one is, uh, yeah, this is a little bit more on the tricky side. What what a great what a great exercise for our fingers. You doing five five four three two five one two. So all your fingers are getting worked here, and all your fingers are being worked here. If you woke up and you said, "All right, I've got ten minutes to practice," imagine if you just did this. And maybe go to the first one. cool the way you can take one lick change the bass line just a little bit and it makes it sound like a totally different uh thing different groove and everything all right thank you for the eight likes it's great to be able to do this on a saturday morning and hang out with the i music academy family all right let's do a few more of these who wants to do the, uh, any more of these all right i'm going to go back to this let's do let's see what the next one. Okay, that's kind of cool. This is the uh, a boogie woogie thing. Now, what's happening here is C, E, G, A, B flat. Kind of doing the mess around. <laughs> that's cool. Again, this PDF, if I just click this icon right here, these are way all of the iMusic Academy things are now. Oh, let me turn up this. Playing it a little faster right, there. Let's go ahead and have fun with this one. This is example number four. It's kind of an old school boogie woogie lick. Old, old school boogie woogie lick. All right, if I hit the back button, guess what? It'll take you guys right back to the PDF. Man, I'm so excited about this. This is the way all the 3.0 courses are. Uh, all right, guys, let's keep going here. Let's see what five is. Oh, all right. All right. This is a game changer. Can you guys see? Okay, let me make sure you guys can see that. Okay. I think we're good. All right. Now, uh, let's talk about this one. So, uh, Oscar Peterson, when I started listening to Oscar Peterson, I would hear all these these times where he's doing this kind of thing and he's playing all these blues things over this. Now, this original bass line is more like this, right? 
And I remember listening to something Oscar Peterson was doing. This is exactly what he was doing while he's doing all this amazing solo stuff. And I'm like, what is going on with all that? And, uh, you know, he was just so incredible with everything like that. But what we're doing here is five, one, four, three, two, one, five, one. Now, this is one of those that you have to practice hands separately. You have to get the span of the octave, and you have to go five, one, four, three, two, one, five. And you practice this over and over. Okay, so. The good news is that after I learn this, and again, we would have to break this one down. You say, oh my gosh, all right, that's together. That's together, the C's are together. The F and the E are together. The C is together. Right? You have to learn that. But then when you go to F, watch this. Same exact fingering, same exact spacing, even on G. Right? So... Now, I want you to notice something that I just did. You remember how I was telling you guys, you use your thumb to get help anchor to get to that next thing that helps smooth everything out. I did that just here. I was doing the left hand bass line. Now watch this. Again, right? Now watch this. Here comes the anchor. Anchor. Right? That's uh, the idea of doing this blues alternate bass course. I had two thoughts when I was coming up with the idea one is a left hand only course which i think we are going to do uh, as a follow-up to this i have written out i think maybe 25 26 bass lines and so far i've only we've only gone over 10 plus a few of the others but uh this volume of course has 10 the the blues alternate bass course but um the idea of i want to do a course where it's just left hand only right right here and you learn this and we spend time not only playing it in one key but learning it in different keys i haven't decided if i'm going to do it in all keys because sometimes that can feel overwhelming but it, but imagine if just on c you learn this eighth note pattern and we do we actually work together and okay we're going to spend five minutes today on learning this bass line or it could be a you know four week course i'm still trying to figure out how we're going to do that but the idea of putting it with one lick really, to me, makes a lot of sense. So it's, if it's the eighth note pattern, you're good there. If it's the quarter note. So my right hand is on automatic pilot, sort of. Or I could do the... Or the boogie woogie. I'm giving you guys a quick overview of just do this lick, just do that, or do baseline, do that one. But I want you to know that I'm just showing you overview. We work up to, we started just like in our courses, we started with this, right? We did this one. And even Blues Volume 4, I'll give you a for instance, if you guys have Blues Volume 4, you know that it's 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. The whole course is on this one specific baseline. And you, you build up the muscle memory there, and then you put all the licks with it. Right? All right, so let's, let's keep talking about uh, how we're going to put all this together. Uh, let's go back to the first one, the one that you guys have the music to. I'm going to go back to example one. I love these bass lines, though. They're so much fun to practice. Uh, let me go back. Oh, you know what I should have done? 
I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna hit the uh, home button. <laughs> All right, so there. And these look great, by the way. All the 3.0 courses on your iPads and, um, and of course, your computers and phones even. But I'm going to hit exercise one. And then we have this one and two and three and four and one and two. And then we're going to wrap up this lesson by me just telling you a couple different fun ways to practice this. All right, we have about, uh, I'm going right until 11. I am signing off at 11. That will give us a full hour from this lesson today. And uh, I just wanted to hang out with you guys today. All right, so here we go. We're going to do... Here's the idea. So you're working on this blues alternate bass thing, but I want to remind you guys of a couple simple licks that we've been doing this week. Is one, you have this idea of the first five notes of the blues scale, right? You want to go automatic pilot on that. That's shape one. Shape two, as you will remember, is the top half of the blues scale. Five of the of the C major scale, flat seven, root, and minor third. And then our F sharp is our connector finger like I love to make sure I get to that F sharp then my thumb comes under and now I'm automatically in shape two right and because I've practiced this hand separate and really done repetition is your friend you get to where all right this really starts to flow under the hand you get these five notes together and then you mash them all together and it sounds horrible right but if you practice getting into that shape then I, I know that any of those notes will work So all I was doing there is the first five notes of the blues scale, and then I'm working on this example that we started today. So that already gives me, just the first five notes of the blues scale gives me a whole new set of notes that I can practice uh, mixing up and making them my own. I can also do the top half of the blues scale. Or I could do a mixture of both. Now, uh, after you practice that, we talked yesterday about the idea of this. This is shape one, first five notes of blue scale. This is the top half. That's our connector shape. But shape one, if you tra transpose that and you do the first five notes, first four notes of the A blues scale, now you have this. So you had this. Okay, so even as I'm doing one shape right here, all those notes are going to work, and the same shape transposed down to A are also going to work. And then when I played this, this example right here, it's giving me one note that I was missing, and that is the major third. I want to occasionally hear that major third. If we play just a minor blues scale over the whole thing, yes, it'll sound okay, but it's not going to sound great because we're missing this major third happy sort of sound. You have this... I went and said, all right, there's a little tension. There's that minor third with just this one simple shape. But even going up here and one, two, three, D up to E, D, E flat, and E, that gives that sort of happy sound. And I kind of like that, right? I like that major third, hearing that major third. I also like hearing this A note. A note sounds great down here. 
of the C blues, you go down three half steps, or you go up here to this A and you play this lick, this from Blues Volume One, I think, is and all I'm doing there is A G A E flat D C A G C. Let me do the lick first. So. All right, now I'll leave you with one more idea that we can do. We've been practicing this all week is the idea of been watching your videos, want to follow up. Hold on a second. Okay, very good. Uh, for send the baseline PDF. All right, Doug, what's up, Doug? Good to see you. So, Doug, are you talking about are you if you're on my email list, Doug? You already have it because I sent out the email this morning. But if you're wanting one of those PDFs, awesome, from Manchester, UK. Very cool. Hey, Stan, thank you so much for hanging out. That's awesome. Uh, Gus, Stan, Dave P., and uh, you guys are awesome. All right, so let me wrap up. So Doug is asking about the PDF, and uh, I'm glad that you find it helpful. Um Tell me which one that you were wanting, which PDF. I'll, I'll send out a few of the the. Um, oh, I tell you what, you might be you might not be on my email list, but I'll send you this one uh, as soon as I get off the live stream. It's just the five three one, right? A great way to get things going. But here's the lick I'm going to leave you guys with because I only have a few more minutes. We have seven minutes to go, and here's what we're going to do: is um, we've been doing three up to the root. Right? That's one. I'll give you two. I'll give you two of the examples to practice. Now that right there gives you your third up to the root. Right? Listen to that. Right? Watch what happens when I go to G. I can go A, B flat, and now the third of G. Now the third of F. I did that wrong. I got my whole right shoulder and my back have been out. So it's making me really, uh, my whole right hand is numb. Uh, or not numb, but very weak and something's off. So I keep missing like little s s simple things I normally wouldn't miss. Uh, but here's what you're going to do, guys. One, five, one, two, one, five, one, two, one, five, one, two, one, five. And then you go cross over with your uh, index finger a whole step down. And that sets you up to go all the way down the keyboard. This is actually in blues volume um, four. So you practice going over the whole thing. And you can keep going down. Let me do that right. Which is so cool, because if I'm playing jazz things, I can do that, and and even when I change to different chords and use the same pattern. And a pattern like this, as I mentioned earlier, you can play in all keys with the same fingering. One, five, one, two, one, five, one, two, one, five, one, two, one. Oops, I did that wrong. Again, I'm already thinking about how I'm going to close out this stream. Okay, so I want to say thank you, of course, to Dave P. I'm going to, I'm going to go over all my thank yous. Thank you to all my new guys uh, that are hanging out at iMusic Academy. So we're going to talk for just a minute, but let me wrap up with a couple of um, practice strategies. So you guys have uh, this example you're going to practice. You have this gives you that major third sound, third up to the root. 
to give it that major feel. You have this one. Or this. Now I need a little more major feel. And you can practice that. Remember, C together, E flat and B flat, uh, A. So I'm going chromatically down to the G and chromatically up to the G. This is really cool because no matter what, after you learn the pattern, no, what, no matter what key I'm in, if I'm on G, right, there's simple things that you, you learn. Okay, uh, this, this is so helpful, guys, to practice one simple concept, and you're going to work on this bass line slowly. And I want to talk about slow practice as we wrap it up. I, I'm a firm believer in hands separate, hands together, but also uh, if you, again, you have 10 minutes to practice, you're going to work on this, uh, this guy right here, right? Get this and pretty soon you'll be able to play it however variation you want to do it. But my left hand, I'm thinking very slowly, th this is how I might practice. Now I'm going to put one of my licks with, with this. Okay, now for my practice group, you guys know that we spent this last year coming up with like 55 songs, and a lot of them are... Uh, were made for my practice group. But one of the things we like to do is guide tones. What are guide tones? Guide tones are like two notes within the chord, the third note of the chord and the seventh note, the flat seven. And guide tones tell us whether or not the chord is major or minor or a major seven or flat seven. And Dave P knows about those guide tones and Vicky does too, right? Da, da. So sometimes I might wanna do this, listen. So uh, one thing that we did last week was the idea of a whole blues, guide tone blues. You can do it all kinds of different ways. Uh, bah, bah. Then to go to the guide tone there. guys enough of that i hope that you guys have had as much fun as i have had teaching you guys today i like all the emails that i've been getting and i love it when you guys tell me where you're from that's really cool and i'm making notes i'm going to do a big i music academy uh, around the world and i'm just going to put like i'll put stan from the uk and put vicky where she's from in ohio and all that so make sure you you put in the comments just of course, your first name, and it can be as general as you want as far as where you are from. All right, I have a couple of assignments for you guys. I want you to learn this PDF, the Blues Alternate Bass Courses, and uh, I want to, again, thank my unofficial members who've been with me for a year and a half. Uh, thank you for doing that. And here's, the, here's my um, uh, opportunity for you guys if you want to do that. 
first of all, you don't ever have to do anything, spend any kind of money with me. Uh, I appreciate just you being a part of iMusic Academy and being on the live streams and commenting on the videos. That helps the algorithm uh, quite a bit, as well as liking the videos. But if anybody wants to be a part of what we're doing, now I am officially going public with this April 1st. This is the first time I think I've mentioned this, uh, or I might have mentioned just a little bit about it yesterday, but my six guys uh, that have been with me for a year and a half, we do four, li four live streams a week, and they, of course, have access to every single thing at iMusic Academy. But let me say this. Um, uh, again, shout out to Dave P, Dave W, Claire, T-Man, Peter, Ian, and Charity. Charity yesterday bought the five course blues bundle 3.0 courses so you get five courses plus you get this blues alternate base course so that's six courses and then here's the game changer is you get access to my membership group until april 1st and that that means starting now i sent charity uh uh the the pdf of the blues alternate base course and of course she got all of her courses yesterday but i sent her an updated version even this morning as well as dave p and all these guys they have access to all of that uh but the membership thing is what is uh sorry the community aspect of the membership is what's so much fun and i literally uh care deeply about this group and we have so much fun together so i'm very thankful for that if you get to the if you get to this point and you want to be a part of that or even try it out i would encourage anyone to get the bundle right i feel like it's very affordable and uh and, and then you get access, immediate access to our membership group. So starting Monday morning and through the week, you'll get your four lives, a minimum of four lives. Uh, and we, we talk about improvisation. We're doing all the things we're doing now. A repetition is your friend. We'll go over all these things. We work on things from the courses. And uh, whether it's me or somebody else, get in some kind of community where it kind of helps you be accountable, and at the same time, uh, I feel like that's when we get a lot done. I've learned so much from being with this group, and it helps me be a better player and teacher just being a part of that. So, opportunity there. There's a link there that will take you to imusicacademy.com, and you can get that bundle. Um, the other thing is, uh, I think I put... Uh, on the, I know on my email list, I sent the example for the first example in the um, Blues Alternate Bass Course, and it has the link to the video, so you just click video, and it'll take you right to that lesson as well. It's a private link, but at least you have the PDF, and you have the lesson that goes with that. The other thing is I launched my uh, WhatsApp link. I think I put it I might not have put it in this live description, but I sent it to my email list of iMusic Academy. It's a general thing. It kind of, we talk about what we're doing. We say, hey, I went and did this concert today, or I have a gig tonight, or here's a picture of my family, whatever, and here are some free PDFs. Here are some lessons. Here's what's going on at iMusic Academy. So I opened that up to the general public, uh, two days ago, and we've already had some people sign up for that. It's a fun way to connect. It's WhatsApp is the uh, is the app and the platform. It's absolutely free to do that, and we've had some people already sign up for that. So um, I would encourage you to to do that. I'll put the link in the comments or the description just so you can get that. And again, you can email me if you have any questions about anything. If there was ever a, ever a financial need or somebody had something they needed to. Uh, they couldn't sign up. They wanted to, but for some reason, I will work with anybody. And I absolutely love where we're going together as a group. So thank you so much for hanging out. I look forward to hearing from you. I hope you have a great, awesome day. Keep it fun. Have fun. Keep it simple. And use very small concepts to help get you to that next level. And you'll get there, and we'll get there together. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.